Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and obviously I've got a guitar to unbox. I honestly can't even remember the brand <laughs> of this guitar. It was sent to me very embarrassingly months and months ago, back kind of mid-summer, and all the travel that I did late summer got in the way of me getting around to unboxing this guitar. I went to Summer Nam, and then I went back to Henning's house in Germany, then I went on a uh, family vacation, and then I went to Sweetwater, and it all got in the way, and then I had a bunch of paid demos and paid content kind of go to the top of the pile. So what we have here is an import guitar. I remember it's like a Super Strat style thing. We're gonna find out the brand when I open it. It is an unpaid video. The only reason I'm mentioning that is because it's taken me so long to get to it. And the reality is, you know, stuff that puts food on the table is gonna get priority. Maybe this will end up surprising me and the YouTube ad revenue or, you know, affiliate earnings through Amazon or, or whatever will make it, you know, the smash hit of the channel that I should have filmed right away and I'll have all this regret. I think I'm opening this the right way. It feels like a styrofoam case without a cardboard box in here. And I think I'm cutting along the seam. It is, yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. It's, it's styrofoam completely wrapped in yellow tape. I've never received a guitar packed like this. I mean, it works. They used an awful lot of tape to make it work. Oh man. It kind of smells like, like surfboard resin. I like that smell. That might just be the, uh, the packing materials. How to adjust the neck with adjustable truss rod. Handy information for anyone that doesn't know. Looks like it comes with a very thin style gig bag here. Standard cheap Radio Shack style cable and the wiggle stick is in there as well. Oh, that's interesting. A bag of strings. I've never seen that before with any, you know, import or budget style guitar. It's just a loose bag of strings. Here we go, let's reveal the brand name first. <laughs> Zhu Wei, Z-U-U-E-I. Did I pronounce that correctly? We've got like a baked maple kind of look here. Reverse headstock. And tell it's gonna be orange. They did allow me to pick the color. I remember that much. So thank you for allowing me to pick the color. I always appreciate that. Because who knows, what if I fall in love with this guitar? I wanna make sure that I have a color that I'm actually gonna like. Why am I so hung up on this piece of packing? Come on, there we go. Got a silica gel pack here. I'm not gonna eat on camera, so I'll save that for later. It's always a joke. I, I never eat the silica packs. I save them for my children. <laughs> so what do we have here? An HSH super strat sort of layout with a strat style bridge. Piece of hardware I've never seen before. Like that is a different style bridge. A, a two post bridge on there. Um, routed down into the body almost like how a Floyd Rose would be. Not the cleanest woodworking I've ever seen around that bridge. The little plastic burr on the top of the humbucker <laughs> coil here. You know, like every time I've mentioned this in a video, I feel silly for saying it, but you really can tell when like the plastic that's being used on a pickup is a different grade of, pack, of, of plastic than you normally encounter. Like this looks like a much cheaper type of plastic that is being used for these pickups. 
Wow, these are, you know, I'm gonna have to take some close-up photos of these pickups. Like the the connector wire is just is right there. <laughs> I've never I've never noticed that on a humbucker before because I'm pretty sure it's always been hidden. The construction of these humbuckers looks very different. I almost want to pull these out of the guitar just to see what the heck is going on here. Wow. I've never seen that either. There, there's a gap in the slot that the nut is installed in. I've never seen that before. I guess it's good that they didn't pay for this demo because uh, the, the the maple neck on this isn't the only thing that's going to get roasted. I just came up with that joke. Wasn't that a good joke, guys? <laughs> this is fun. I actually like this detail. The output jack is hidden on the back edge here, and it's at a slant. So that's 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 a concept a lot of guitar companies should be doing because you plug in there and then you wrap around your strap. Is what I I typically wrap a cable around my strap anyways, but it's just in the perfect place for that. Very smart. The spring cavity plate is recessed into the body, which is something that you don't see often. Like that's an interesting detail that this guitar has when there's other details here that are really catching my eye as funky. How much are these? I need to look them up. 229 is what I'm saying for this guitar. Comes in green, blue, light blue, orange, and pink. There's a humbucker, humbucker model as well, and a humbucker single, single model also. A little bit of range of prices. Cheapest one is 229, most expensive one is 239. All right. Let's get it plugged in and see what it sounds like. The tuners feel bad. Like they've got that thing where you tune up and then when you have to tune back to correct, it just jumps like a quarter turn. They feel firm, like they'll probably stay in tune and hold their position once you, you know, put them where you want them. But that jumpiness is always, it's always felt bad to me. Getting a weird, like sympathetic, like sitar ringing tone in. I'm not sure where that's coming from yet. The bridge is floating which is gonna make it tricky to get this in tune for the first time. Like it's floating in this cavity, like Floyd Rose style. I think it's in tune. Fretwork isn't terrible for 230 bucks. It is gritty in that chalky sort of feeling way, but the ends of the frets are not bad. The, the neck itself feels kind of dry. I mean, it has this satin baked maple sort of finish, but it's translating to having a dry feel to it that I'm not sure I'm into at the moment. I'm sure it would, you know, break in over time and uh, feel more comfortable if I use this guitar a lot. The edges of the nut, a little rough up here. All in all, it feels like a slightly unfinished piece of wood that they're using on the neck. Like, And it gets weirdly extra dark on the back of the headstock. Like it got a little extra baked back there, some sort of uneven heating going on. 
a little bit of that around the tuners as well. I don't know if that affects the wood at all or if it's just a different process that they used to bake it. Maybe it was like, you know, flame roasted with a blowtorch or something. I have no idea how maple necks get baked in the first place. People who bake maple necks, tell us in the comment section, how do you bake a maple neck? The uh, tone knob was rolled back a bit there, so I put it all the way open. It's a really weird, like, sitar ringing noise there. Yeah, it's something to do with the nut cut. <laughs> this is not off to a great start for this guitar, is it? I was a little nervous to unbox this because I was like, oh, what if I find out that this belongs in the Afforda Strat series? What if it, you know, dethrones the current Afforda Strat? But I can say right now, it's not going to. Maybe it'll dial in a lot better, but... Does that sound so bad on the D and the G string? All right, let's test out the various pickups. That has been the bridge pickup. Here is the number two position. Kind of a stratty sound there. But still kind of weird on that G and D string. What is going on there? Middle position. Number four position. Yeah, it has that stratty hollow sound on the mixed positions. And the neck. Try throwing some dirt and reverb at it. Back in tune, I'm running through a DoD 250. It's a little bit of reverb from the Milk and F stop. the bridge here's the number two middle four and neck go a little bit more aggressive with the rat's bane from wampler maybe a lot more aggressive
they're not microphonic. Uh, that little bit that it picked up, uh, it could just be me vibrating the strings with my voice. Um, but yeah, that was very faint compared to many of the very microphonic pickups that I've encountered across, you know, budget guitars recently. So congratulations. You passed that test, you got pickups that aren't horrifically microphonic. <laughs> So here's me putting myself in the head of someone buying this guitar off of Amazon where they sell them for 230 bucks. You look at it and you're like, oh, it looks kind of like, you know, like a modern, you know, kind of like fun take on a Charvel sort of concept. It looks like it's going to be a fast, like shredder style guitar, it's got a humbucker, it's got a single, it's got a humbucker. There's associations to be made with that sort of layout. There's a reverse headstock. Oh, it's gonna be a fun shreddy guitar. It's got a truss rod adjustment at the heel with a little, uh, you know, little wheel down there. If I bought this guitar with those things in mind, with that, first impression off of pictures on the internet in mind, I would be disappointed with this showing up. It technically has those shapes, those specs, those, those loadouts and whatnot. But this bridge is visibly cheap. Like I can't remember ever seeing a bridge, anything like this up close. The pickups are visibly cheap in ways that I've never seen before, as far as the exposed wires down here and things like that. And you know, <laughs> untrimmed pieces of connecting plastic floating off of it. The issue with the nut having a gap next to it is just poor woodworking. The tuners feel really bad. There's even a little 
chip taken out of the wood near the nut here. And there's people who think that if you've got a YouTube channel and someone sends you a guitar, then they, you know, send you the pick of the litter and have it professionally set up and stuff like that. If that's the case, then, uh, you know, people aren't considering me to be a YouTuber because, you know, I get stuff like this sometimes. Honestly, though, like, I mean, I hate to say, I hate to trash on a company that sent me something. You know, the, 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 the theory of the internet trolls and the internet commenters and whatnot is that if you're sent something, then you're unbelievably excited about it. And of course, you're going to be overwhelmingly positive about it. I, I, this is possibly the worst guitar that has ever been sent to me by a company before. I was sent that Mahar. Grant Wilson sent it to me. I think Grant sent that. Grant, you sent the Mahar, right? Which was like a Carnival Prize level guitar. No, I think someone else sent that. Who am I thinking of? Um, and this is above that, for sure. It's it's better than the Mahar. But yeah, if I if I paid two hundred and thirty dollars as a consumer, and this is what showed up, based on you know the pictures that I had bought it off of on the internet, I would I would be upset because it it's. They do a good job of making a thing that looks like it's going to be cool. And it does look cool. But man, the, the details are not cool. The sounds of the, the, the G and the D string. Even when I'm, I thought it was the nut at first, but even when I'm fretting it, that sounds bad, right? It's not an action thing. It's not, it's not buzzing on the next fret over. It might be buzzing within the saddle. I mean, tuning stability issues out of the box is going to happen with a lot of different guitars. The fact that this has a floating bridge and a nut that clearly has issues um, are going to contribute to that. I mean, it, you know, the strings needing to break in and stretch to a certain extent will have something to do with that. But I do think there's other issues at play there. because it does look cool and like little details like that are fun it has a slanted neck pocket here at least yeah it does it does it's very slight but the neck pocket does slant towards the neck you get cutaway heels and stuff like that so you can shred this extra fast the neck does feel redeemable like it's totally playable i think i think that's the best feature of this guitar is the neck is straight. The action is decent on it. I could lower it and I feel like I wouldn't have any issues with real buzzing. Yeah, there's room to lower this action just fine. The neck is the best part of it. But man, my gut reaction right now is that for 230, 240 bucks, you can do a lot better these days. I almost suspect that this was sent to me in reaction to the uh, the Ert videos that I did. I covered that Ert, and maybe this company was like, "Oh, we have guitars that kind of look like that. Let's send them one." But I, I can, you know, I can positively say that the Ert guitars are are much much better players than this. Much much better. Yeah, leagues above this. Just as far as quality of hardware and things like that. You know, they're not perfect. You know, when those Ertz were getting a lot of hype around them, um, people were saying really big things like, oh man, you could compare it to a $1,700 guitar and stuff like that. No, that's not true either. But 
this is this is far below the quality of an ERT. I kind of want to take it apart to get a closer look at those pickups. Let me get let me get some close up photos of parts of this, and then I'm gonna bust out the screwdriver. It started out cold in here, but now it's getting hot. It's that time of year where it's like the weather can't decide what it's gonna be. Is it gonna be winter or is it gonna be summer? Let's take a look at the guts first. I'm a little bummed. I get, I get a little sad anytime a guitar is like objectively not good and I have to say, you know, things about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anyone to get the impression from this video that they should go buy one of these um, because the experience I'm having with it is not up to snuff for a, a $240 guitar. I think if this guitar was 150, if this guitar was a carnival prize, then that, that would be one thing. You do have to take, you know, price into account. But at a certain point, like if this, if this is a quality of instrument that's gonna be built, save the wood for something else. I think if you see one of these locally for, you know, 50 bucks or something like that, and you want a project, super thin bridge block on that, which isn't surprising. That's what should come on budget guitars, honestly. A lot of uh, budget guitars have started to provide big, fat, thick blocks, which is great, which is great. But that's what I'm used to seeing on budget guitars. At least, you know, budget guitars of my youth. You know, even Mexican Fenders used to come with those razor thin bridge blocks. Nothing exciting to see here. You know, cheap looking wire, cheap looking little mini pots, a, a five way switch. No surprises, typical rough routing, you know, kind of fuzzy wood inside that's been painted over. I feel bad for the person that was in charge of sending me this guitar. And now, you know, it's, it's on internet record that, you know, it's that I'm sitting here trashing it, that, you know, I'm saying that it's not good. I, you know, I don't throw those sorts of things around lightly. But honestly, like you, you guys, are my actual clients. You guys out there are my actual customers or my boss. If if I was like, oh, this guitar is great, blah, 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 thank you for sending it to me, and you go out and you buy it, and you're like, wow, Ryan lied to me. That hurts me. That hurts my business. That hurts what I do here. You know, I don't benefit anything from that. Even if, you know, I did a, a, a guitar video recently where I was paid, and I pointed out a lot of things that were wrong with the guitar and I couldn't sign off on the guitar, but I was still paid for it. Like, this is what I do, guys. You guys are literally my employer and the brands that send me stuff are trying to earn you as customers. And I'm kind of like the middleman in between that. And it's, it's my job to accurately represent what's sent to me so that you can make purchasing decisions. How am I going to get this? I don't want to commit a fresh set of strings to this. I didn't even check how the like intonation was. Maybe I'll check that later. It sounded mostly fine, right? This is so rare too, that I actually have to say, I can't sign off on something. I can't find enough good about it to tell people that they can make their own decisions whether or not they want to buy it or not. Like, it bums me out, it really does. Because most, most gear, most guitars, most pedals, amps, it's all subjective. I might not like something, but someone else out there might like it. I certainly like a lot of stuff that other people dislike. We have tastes. But there's, you know, when something has a bunch of quality issues, that's different. 
I just want to get a peek at these humbuckers. There's a shim in the neck. It's made out of what well, looks like a real piece of wood. It's not made out of foam or anything like that. Someone tagged me in a post about uh, Glary's a while back and they're like, I think this is made out of styrofoam and they ended up figuring out that it is actually made out of wood. But there are people out there who are like, man, this, this wood is so low quality. I can't really tell if it is wood or not. But this is made out of wood. Again, that neck, that neck feels like it could have promise to it. Like if someone spent the time to dial it in a little bit, maybe uh, smooth out the texture of it. There's no reason that neck couldn't go on a good guitar or a decent budget guitar. I need a point of comparison. So here's a GFS pickup that I have that is, you know, like GFS are, they're decent pickups, they're good pickups, but they're certainly not expensive. The construction of this is so weird to me. It has like an extra spacer underneath it, making the whole thing thicker than it needs to be. And it looks like the magnet poles go down through under that spacer. Oh, and the, okay. So that's the magnet right there. That's not the way humbuckers are supposed to be. It's like they reinvented the, uh, the construction of a humbucker. I could tell something was weird about these just from looking at it from the outside, you know? That exposed bit of wire there is what really had me looking at it hard. And then the more I looked at it, I could tell something was off. All right, what, what do you guys think? Am I being too hard on this poor guitar? Am I being unfair? It's not my desire to be unfair. It's not my desire to be a channel that tries to, you know, like gather clicks by trashing on things unnecessarily. It's weird to me that they would even send something like this out to someone like me, to, to a channel like this. Like they, they've got to know that their guitar is not great, right? Like why would they, why would they, do they think it's just, what do they think is going to happen? It puts me in an uncomfortable position to have to trash on things. I can't imagine it helps their business at all. I really don't get it. I don't even feel like tuning it back up um, to check the intonation. At this point, it doesn't matter. Um, Zue, Zui, however you pronounce your brand. Um, defend yourself in the comments. If you feel like it. If you know, at some point in the future, you change the way that you do things. Um, hit me up, I guess, and I'll, you know, I'll check it out. But at 230, 240 bucks or whatever, like there's no way, there's no way I can sign off on this. And I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but you know what? Anyways. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked. Use all my links down below in the description if you're shopping for stuff. You don't have to buy things like this to, you know, send me some affiliate earnings. If you click on my general links in the description and do your normal shopping that you were going to do anyways, I will get a cut of that. And it helps me put food on the table, you know, Diapers over our head. I messed up the joke already. But anyways, bye everyone. Stay grounded.